Hey guys, Grumpy here with Ship Showcase. In this series, we're going to focus on um, ships that are interesting, unique, um, even experimental. Um, ships that I have designed either personally or have come across, or um, ships that I pull from the ship design channel in the Discord. Um, in this episode, we're going to focus on the monitor, um, what makes it so tanky, what makes it a very, uh, very, very powerfully, uh, defensively powerful ship. We're going to go over the mechanics and then how I would scale it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the showcase. So the monitor um, is a humble little frigate. It boasts two flat cannons and two small universals. Um, if you wanted to, in theory, you could put small ballistics in here that do kinetic damage or missiles like sabos, atropos, um, salamanders, anything like that. Um, and you could build it that way. But I do not recommend it. Um, the monitor is strictly for defense, and defense it does well. Uh, the the two mechanics going for the monitor is that one it has flux shunt. What flux shunt does is it allows you to dissipate hard flux while your shields are active. Um, most ships in the game, actually, I think I think all of the ships in the game, um, you have to lower your shields in order to dissipate your hard flux. And as we know, once you lower your shields, that's when you start taking damage to your armor, to your hull, and eventually your ship is destroyed. Uh, the monitor doesn't have to deal with that. The monitor can dissipate, or yeah, can uh, dissipate the damage as it comes in. So that's really good. And the second thing going for the monitor is that it has fortress shield. What fortress shield does is it reduces the amount of damage you take by a factor of 10. Um, damage to your shield by a factor of 10. Um, so if a missile were going to strike your shield and do 100 damage, instead, if you have Fortress Shield up, it would only do 10 damage. Um, so these two working in conjunction, you can uh, you can see just how the how strong the monitor can potentially be. Um, but we can we can improve on that. We can build on top of that. Um, and the way we do that is through scaling the defensive factors of the monitor. The main way that we scale the the defense of the monitor is through venting. Um, if we read flux shunt, the way it reads is the more, uh, it allows you to vent half of your hard flux based on your dissipation rate. So the more vents that we have, uh, the more hard flux we can dissipate. Um, so here we have 436 flux dissipation. Half of that would be a little more than 200. So 218, uh, hard flux dissipated per second. Um, in practice, what this means is uh, a Reaper does about 4,000 high explosive damage. Uh, against shields, it would do 2,000 since it would be half as effective. Um, and then with Fortress Shield up, we can reduce that 2,000 down to 200. So uh, fresh out of the box with very little investment, a monitor can tank one Reaper per second, uh, which is nuts. That's incredible. Um, most weapons are no other weapon in the game does that much damage so against smaller weapons um, the monitor really shines uh, another way we can scale the um, effectiveness of the the monitor is through shield flux per damage uh, shield flux per damage is a more multiplier um, for every one point of damage you would normally take instead you take um, this much damage so 0.73 uh, so what this means is our flux capacity is actually multiplied by uh, about 1.4. Um, you would take 1 and divide it by 7.3. Um, so then you would multiply that by the flux capacity. So our flux capacity is actually closer to 5,800. And then keeping in mind Fortress Shields, you would multiply this by 10. So its flux capacity is actually closer to 58,000. Um, so very, very, very powerful there. Um, for that reason, we don't really invest in the capacitors of the monitor because it's rare that the monitor will ever use up all of its um, all of its hard flux at once. Like it, it, it's very, very difficult to overwhelm the monitor. So instead, being able to dissipate the hard flux at the lowest level um, is really what's going to give it that that staying power. Uh, this is also important for things like tachyon lances and ion weapons that arc across shields. Um, ion weapons, their arc chance is determined by how high, your, how high your hard flux is. 
So if you have a lot of capacity and not a lot of vents, you'll build up a lot of hard flux and still be fine. Um, but then you'll take a Tachyon Lance to the face, it'll arc across your your um, shield, and then it'll start doing damage to the, sh the ship itself. Uh, so you really want high vents more so than, uh, than high capacity. So that's how you scale the, the monitor, uh, flux dissipation and shield flux or damage. So for that reason, we take something like safety overrides, which adds a ton of mobility to the monitor, so making it very agile, um, able to give it that, that uh, active defense where we move out of the line of fire to reset our flux. Um, but it also doubles our flux dissipation rate. So in case we do need to tank an enemy, we can sit in its face and dis dissipate a, a ton of damage. So save the overrides is great for two reasons there. Uh, additionally, it enables resistant flux conduits. What resistance flux conduit says is, uh, well, one, it, it reduces the EMP damage we take, which is okay. That's not really that important. But more importantly, it increases our ship flux dissipation rate while venting by 25%. There's a unique interaction between flux shunt safety overrides and resistant flux conduits in that as long as we have our shields up, we're always venting. Um, safety overrides gives us removes our active venting it re gives us passive venting flux shunt says you dissipate hard flux while your shields are active so resistance flux conduit is always active because we're always venting um, as long as our shields are up we're always venting flux um, so really unique interaction there so instead so we're extracting even more out of our our um, flux dissipation um, flux shunt calculation so moving on to a little more investment uh, we add a little more to our vents uh, we build in hardened shields which um, improves our shield flux for damage number um, you can also again carry over resistance flux conduits if you want and then I built in hardened subsystems but if you wanted to you could build in uh, resistance flux conduits um, this is more so in the mid game, so fights are a little longer, so that is something to consider. Um, you don't need hardened subsystems so much in the mid game, but I built it in because it uh, it uh, it allows your monitors to stay in the fight longer. Again, safety overrides, and I don't think I mentioned this before, but shield conversion front just completes your shield arc, um, makes your shields cover every part of your monitor, so you never have to worry about being flanked. Um, so this is a, a much tankier ship. And then moving on to the, the final level, this is what I demonstrated at the beginning of the video. But uh, getting an officer with elite field modulation uh, does everything we want it to. It reduces the amount of damage our shields take. So now we're down to 0.52. Uh, and it also increases our flux dissipation rate while our shields are active by uh, 15%, which means we get, instead of 50% shield or flux shunt, we get uh, 65%. So all all told, like all totaled, our flux capacity is somewhere north of like 90,000. Um, that's the equivalent of like three Paragons. Uh, the Paragon max capacitors has a flux capacity of 37, um, 37,000. Our monitor, when all is said and done, is the equivalent of uh, about three paragons worth of uh, flux capacity so very tanky very durable ship um, the way you use this is either to lock down uh, capital ships i can't even deploy that many uh let's go with a national so that applies a little more constant pressure so the way you would use the monitor is to lock down a bunch of uh, large threats or well it can either lock down a few large threats or it can lock down um, a lot of smaller threats. So if I go ahead and sit in the middle of this, uh, we see that our flux dissipation is around 400 right now. Uh, once the... Oh, <laughs> I don't think they'll be able... Okay, once on... both onslaughts are on top of us, uh, we see that our flux is going up. That's fine, that's a lot of damage. Uh, but what we can do is because we're so fast, we can easily kite all of this and allow our flux to go ahead and reset. And once we're out of damage, uh, we can lower our shields. We don't have to due to the mechanics. 
of the um, the monitor but then we can send it right back into the fray and this is a ton of damage right any other ship would be destroyed at this point uh, we're also agile enough that we can kite around right uh, we can make a fool of these capital ships and we can tie them up all day um, no big deal this is removing almost 240 deployment costs from any fight which is insane uh, the rest of your fleet what it would do is it could you know flank around it could take uh, take on any one of these ships individually um, it could deal with the rest of the enemy fleet whatever it needs to uh, but this is the the most extreme example of the monitor more realistically what you'll probably end up using it for if we go with the low example version is it'll either tank a single capital ship or it'll tank a bunch of frigates and destroyers for you we go ahead and move it into position what you would do is you would use this to control the pace of battle um, you would use it to manipulate ships where you need to drag them to your fleet push them to the edge of um, the battlefield whatever you need to do um, essentially it would sit there in the middle and uh, just distract and tank for you while the rest of your fleet uh, deals with whatever else it needs to but anyway that's the monitor I um, hope you guys enjoy this um, if you do have any questions leave them in the comments below and again uh, for the ship showcase if you uh, will we get away we do uh, for the ship showcase, if you um, do want a chance for your ship to be highlighted in a future video, go ahead and drop it in the ship design portion of the uh, Discord. But other than that, uh, Grumpy out.